My name is uh, Jones, and uh, today we are going to look at the drugs uh, that are acting on the intestinal tract. This is in a series of our PowerPoint uh, uh, presentation on drugs that are acting on the intestinal tract. Okay, so we have had uh, lessons in uh, other units, and uh, I would age you if you have not watched that, uh, you watch uh, from uh, for all the units uh, that we have uh, uh, covered because uh, we're trying to follow a system. So the general objective is that uh, by the end of this unit, uh, you should have the knowledge and the understanding on drugs that are used uh, to treat infections affecting the gastrointestinal tract or drugs that are used to treat conditions that affect the gastrointestinal tract. The specific objective is that by the end of the lesson, they should be able to know the specific groups of drugs that are used within the gastrointestinal tract. And these include antacids, emetics, and emetics, and cholinergic agents, laxatives and apegatives. Other groups include antidiarrheals, suppositories, lecto infusions, antihelminthics, antiseptics, and we also have drugs used in treatment of vasodilatoriasis. Let us start our discussion by looking at antacids. They are drugs which work by neutralizing gastric acid to relieve pain caused by hyperacidity in case of peptic ulcers, gastritis, and esophagitis. Absorbable and acid such as sodium bicarbonate raise the alkalinity of the blood when taken frequently and may cause renal damage with an excessive milk intake. Non-absorbable antacids are preferable. These include aluminium and magnesium hydroxide, and also magnesium trisilicate. They are best given when symptoms occur or are expected, usually between meals and at a bedtime, four or more times a daily. Additional doses may be required up to once an hour to reduce gastric acidity throughout the day. There are chemical substances, uh, that is antacids, uh, okay, with the basic nature of uh, a base. Okay, so they are alkaline. So antacids are chemical substances basic in nature, like they are alkaline in nature. When ingested, they react with gastric acid to produce a salt and water. You know, when a base reacts with an acid, so the acid is neutralized. These are taken to leave abdominal discomfort associated with hyperacidity, esophageal reflex, epigastric pain, and peptic ulcers. And acids should not be given at the same time as other drugs like tetracycline, chloroquine, and bifampicin, as they may impair their absorption action. They work by neutralizing some of the excess gastric acid and by increasing the gastric uh, pH. They diminish the activity of uh, pepsin in the gastric, concentrate, uh, gastric secretion. In this way, further erosion of a membrane on the ulcer is uh, inhibited. Properties of uh, good and acids. They must be insoluble and neutral in aqueous solution, but capable of neutralizing the acid. They must work rapidly, effective, and maintain their effectiveness and their effect for several hours. They should not be able to disturb the acid base balance of the blood and cause alkalosis or make the urine alkaline with the, the danger of causing calculi or stone in the urinary tract. They must be non-irritant to the stomach and intestine, 
and not cause diarrhea or constipation. They should not produce acid rebound. And acid are best given when the symptoms occur and are taken usually between meals and bedtime. And acid should not be given at the same time with drugs like tetracycline and papicin, of which we have mentioned all this because they affect or may impair their absorption. Let us look at the profile of one antacid, aluminium hydroxide. Presentation is a tablet, a chewable 500 milligrams, a mixture or 250 mg for 5 ml, gel 4% of aluminium oxide. Indication is hyperacidity or peptic ulcers. When taking an antacid, we we'll have to chew the dosage, one to two tablets, half an hour before and after meals. Side effect is that they may cause a constipation as they may also affect a peristalsis. Also, it has to be noted that when uh, taking an acid, you should give with caution with a uh, in a patient with renal function uh, disorder. Magnesium hydroxide. Indication is hyperacidity, peptic ulcer, and constipation in our infants. Those for adult disdain are to 20 meals adult, 20 meals, then infant is 0.5 mil per kg body weight. Side effects are is uh, diarrhea, caution, impaired renal function. Okay, so then uh, we look at uh, magnesium uh, tricilicate. Indication is hyperacidity, a peptic ulcer. Presentation is compound tablets and the mixture. Magnesium tricilicate is available in 250 milligrams and aluminum hydroxide of 120 milligrams. Action is that uh, reduce uh, total acid load in uh, the GIT and also reduces uh, pepsin activity, which increases uh, gastric uh, pH and uh, strengthens gastric mucosa barrier. Dose of 1 to 2 tablets are uh, chewable as required. Uh, the mixture of 10 to 20 mils as required can be given. The implication of this is that with the prolonged use and uh, renal impairment, let say with the missing implication is that with prolonged use and renal impairment, we can watch for symptoms of hypermagnesemia, hypotension, nausea, vomiting, depressed uh, reflexes. Uh, respiratory depression and coma. These will be presenting signs and symptoms because of hypermagnesemia. Now we are looking at another type of uh, uh, another group or class of drugs that are used within the GIT and these are H2 receptor antagonists. These inhibit histamine receptors of the gastric parietal cells resulting in a reduced gastric acid secretion, a gastric volume, and hydrogen ion concentration. An example of H2 receptor antagonist is acimetidine or tagmate. Action is a selective inhibitor of histamine-induced gastric acid secretion. Indication is peptic ulcers and other related ulcers. Lanitidine. Lanitidine is also an H2 receptor antagonist. The action is that competitively inhibit histamine at the H2 receptor of gastric parietal cells, resulting in reduced gastric acid secretion. Also, gastric volume and reduced hydrogen concentration. So, it's available in 150 milligrams per oral, B, uh, that is a B. Uh, given uh, twice a day, or 300 milligrams are given per oral, and uh, it should not exceed 300 milligrams per day, or you can give five, uh, 50 milligrams a dose, so that is IM or IV. Side effects of uh, lanitidine include the tigo, malaise, blurred vision, uh, jaundice, or leukopenia. It is also important that we know that uh, there can be drug interaction 
may decrease the effect of uh, ketoconazole and hydroconazole and may alter serum levels of ferrous sulfate and diazepam. So this is uh, this drug has got uh, this uh, drug interaction. Let us now look at another group of drugs that are used within GIT, and these are proton pump inhibitors. Proton pump and medication reduce acid levels and allow the ulcer to heal. They decrease the gastric acid secretion by inhibiting the parietal cell. They bind to the proton pump or parietal cell, inhibiting secretion of hydrogen ions into the gastric domain. So they affect the hydrogen potassium ATP pump. They relieve symptoms of active duodenal ulcers. Physicians may prescribe for up to eight weeks to treat all grades of erosive esophagitis. An example here of a proton pump inhibitor is omeprazole. Adults can tolerate 20 mg per order given four times a day for about four to eight weeks. Uh, pediatric adults are not established. Contraindication not administered to patients who are hypersensitive. Let us now look at another group of drugs that are used within the GIT and these are emetics. So emetics are drugs that induce a vomiting and are divided into, into two groups. Biflex emetics. These, they induce a vomiting by irritating the stomach. Example given is that warm salt water, mustard one tea teaspoon, to pint of warm milk. So these cause reflex emesis. Then we have central emetics. These, they induce a vomiting by irritating the vomiting center, the chemoreceptor trigazon, direct in the brain. Example given is apple morphine. It has no analgesic effect and not they are relatively used. Indications of emetics. They can be used in poisoning when a gastric ravage is not possible. But you need to note that you have to avoid if a patient has taken a corrosive chemical as there may be aspiration to the lungs and it may cause um, chemical pneumonia and other complications. Acute indigestion that may be due to excessive constipation of food. So emetics can be given in this condition of acute indigestion or that which is due to excessive constipation of food. Can also be given or classified as local irritants for reflex emetics producing vomiting reflexes and central emet emetics for chemical receptor trigger zone. Now, let us look at another opposite uh, type of drug to emetics, uh, and those are anti-emetics. These uh, drug agents uh, prevent or relieve nausea and vomiting. Phenothiazine derivatives are dopamine antagonists and act centrally by blocking the chemoreceptor trigger zone. They are used to deliver symptoms of nausea and vomiting. And emetics should be prescribed only when the cause of vomiting is known, particularly in children. Otherwise, the symptomatic relief that they that they produce um, that they produce may delay or mask diagnosis. They are used to treat the cause of vomiting. The choice of drugs depends on the etiology of vomiting. What we are saying is that when we are giving antibiotics, you should, should not give because um, I should not give anyhow because they may mask. Uh, the illness that you're supposed uh, to diagnose. So, because we observe the nature of vomiters so that we may establish uh, why the vomiting is there. But if the patient is experiencing excessive vomiting for the sake of the patient not losing a lot of fluids and uh, having an electrolyte imbalance, the magic antimetics are given to control the vomiting center so that the patient 
uh, reduces only the frequency of vomiting. Metoprolamide or Plasi or Mantenon. This is an effective and emetic and has positive effect on uh, DIT motility and gastric aperistalsis. Okay, so this drug can also lead to increase uh, to increase in gastric emptying rate. It is also a drug of choice if someone is receiving uh, cancer drugs and uh, they are experiencing some severe vomiting. Metrocopromide can be given. Action. Brocade of dopamine receptor centrally on the receptor trigger zone. A part of the brain which, when stimulated by neurotransmitter dopamine, evokes a vomiting. Indications. It is given in nausea and vomiting, particularly in gastrointestinal disorders or during treatment with the cytotoxic drugs. We have already covered the cytotoxic drugs, and these are drugs that have been used in cancer. So we are saying metrocopromide is a drug of choice to reduce uh, the, epi the episode or frequency of vomiting if someone is on cytotoxic drugs. Presentation, it's available in 5 mg and 10 mg, and also a mixture of 5 mg per meal and injection of 5 mg per meal is available. Those adults, we have 10 mg are given three times a day before meals or 10 mg IM or IV 10 mg given three times a day. Even children, doses can still be calculated of one to three years at 10 to 14 kg, one mg three times a day, three to five years at 15 to 19 uh, kg. So you can give two mg, but it's uh, two to three times a day. So we have um, one to three years, those weighing between 10 to 14 kg, where you can give one milligram. Then we have three to five years, okay? Those that are weighing uh, between 15 to 19, where you can give two. Then uh, five to nine, those weighing between 20 to 20, 29, where you can give 2.5 milligrams. And then uh, those nine to 14 years are weighing 30 kg and above, where you can give uh, five milligrams. Side effects. So there can be extrapyramidal symptoms, especially in children, such as mutism, that is involving um, uh, for children, then their tongue protrusion, uh, tremors of the limbs, drowsiness, diarrhea, constipation, and nystigmas. So extrapyramidal, extrapyramidal symptoms can be seen, especially in uh, children. Contraindication in a pregnancy. Causes of vomiting include vestibular disorders, surgery of mid ear, motion sickness, or taking of poisonous drugs. So, when uh, giving the drug, you can uh, observe for any cause of vomiting that includes vestibular disorder, surgery of mid ear, or motion sickness. Phenothiazines. Drugs which include chlorpromazine or lagactyl and prochlorperazine okay, are used for symptomatic relief of nausea from underlying diseases. So these are phenothiazines. So phenothiazines are dopamine antagonists and act centrally by blocking the chemoreceptor trigger zone. They are of value for prophylaxis and treatment of nausea and vomiting associated with cancer diseases, radiation sickness, MCs, also taking of cytotoxic drugs or general anesthesia. So you find that uh, they can also be given as pre-medication in surgery to avoid the issue of vomiting. An example is a promethazine or phenigan. Antihistamine, antimetic uh, sedatives, that is, it's a mode of action. It's just got antihistamine, antimetic, and sedative effects. Therefore, indication can be various allergic conditions, nausea, and vomiting. 
It's also available is 25 to 75 milligrams per oral, and also it's available in IM and IV. Side effects include dry mouth, abroad vision, and drowsiness. These are drugs are contraindicated in liver disease. Uh, that is, you, uh, you have to give with caution or don't give someone as a known liver disease. Let us now look at another group of drugs, and uh, this, these are anticholinergic agents. These drugs reduce gastric secretion and, and motility by blocking the action of parasympathetic nervous system. Parasympathetic makes the GIT become active. So when the action is blocked, then motility will be blocked. Drug used include atropine. Action, it inhibits acetylcholine at the parasympathetic neuro effect junction, blocking the vagal effect on the sinoatrial node. The vagus nerve is the one that is responsible for stimulation of the GIT, especially when you're talking of the stomach. It accelerates a conduction through the sinoatrial node and speeds up the heart rate. Indication sympathetic blood cardia, iritis, uveitis, and epeptic ulcer disease. Contraindication. This drug is a contraindicated in hypertension, a glaucoma, or asthma. Side effects. Headache, restlessness, disorientation, insomnia, excitement, dry mouth, or constipation. Laxatives and pegatives are as a, another as a key group of drugs that are used within the GIT. So the classification of laxatives and pegatives, we have bulky forming laxatives. This drug loosens the bowels, thereby promoting evacuation as a result of a softer form that's too. They act by retaining water in the colon, thus increasing a stool bulk and stimulating bowel movement to produce soft stool. An example is a spagyra husk and a bran. They are neither digested nor absorbed. They should be taken with a plenty of fluid. Better to do so may result in fecal impaction or intestinal obstruction. They take about two to three days to exit an effect. The indication is a constipation. Dose at one suppository and contraindication if one has got an official proctitis and oscillative hemorrhoids. Liquid paraffin as a laxative or pegative. Indication is chronic constipation and painful anal vector conditions. Dose is attained to 30 mils. Side effects include seepage from anus and perianal irritation after prolonged use. Stimulant laxatives. These act by stimulating the nave endings of the nave pretzels in the gut wall, causing irritation and increased peristalsis in small and large bowels. Sena glycosides or senocodes. This one takes several hours to act, about 8 to 12 hours. Action is that it promotes a fluid accumulation. It is available in presentation of 7.5 milligrams. Indication it is used for preparation for delivery, surgery, lecture, and bowel examination. Can also be used in bowel evacuation before abdominal or radiological procedure like endoscopy. Side effects include abdominal colic and flatulence. Biscodil or Dalcolax is available in 10 mg or 5 mg tablets and as support story. Takes several hours to act, about 6 to 12 hours. Best given at night to encourage a bowel action. 
Supposed to react more rapidly within one hour. Please, it's important that you take note when talking about discussing laxative and purgative that the stimulant laxative increase in the spinal motility and often cause abdominal cramps. They should not be used in the spinal obstruction. They cause a smooth muscle atony in the colony and potassium loss. Contraindication. The drug should not be given in patients with the following that is nausea, vomiting, abdominal pains, fecal impaction, or intestinal obstruction. Some nursing consideration for executive and purgative include the give with caution in patients with rectal bleeding. Let us now look at emollient purgatives. These they lubricate the GIT by retaining fluids that with within a bowels, lumen without in soft stool and stimulating peristalsis. The osmotic pegatives act by osmosis. That is, the osmotic pressure of salt in solution retains sufficient fluids within the gut, which should be isotonic with the body fluids. Magnesium sulfate or Epsom salt is a typical saline pegative and has a bitter taste and may be given with orange juice. Something to, uh, to take as caution is that you use, uh, use with caution in the elderly and those with renal impairment. Other mild applicatives may include magnesium citrate and magnesium hydroxide. Let us now look at another class of drugs within the GIT and uh, this is the sixth group of what we call antidiarrheals. Diarrhea is an increase in the frequency and volume of stool with an alteration in its consistency. It can either be acute or chronic. Acute is sudden onset, short-lived, self-limiting, and mostly caused by indigestion or infection. Chronic is diarrhea for more than two weeks and the stool must be taken for investigation. Management is by fluid infusion. However, some drugs can be used to control and stop the diarrhea. Okay, so now we have um, the first group of the, the first uh, drug, loperamide or imodium. It is a sympathetic agent which um, bears some chemical structure resemblance to morphine and probably reduces bowel motility in a similar way. Action. Probably this drug works by reducing the effect of acetylcholine on gut receptors on the secular and longitudinal muscles of the intestinal wall and this reduces peristaltic activity. Indication. It is may be given as adjunct in the management of acute non-specific diarrhea and chronic diarrhea with uh, dehydration. May also be used in inflammatory bowel disease and it comes in presentation of 2 mg capsule. So dose. Initial dose of 4 mg are followed by 2 mg after each loose stool may be given but do not exceed a daily dose of about 16 milligrams as the patient may end up being constipated or having fecal impaction. Side effects. Side effects of aloperamide include abdominal clamps, skin reaction, and cholinergic effects, respiratory depression, euphoria, numbness of extremity, nausea, and vomiting. Some to take caution is that do not use in children under four years. Let us now look at the seventh group of drugs that are used within the GIT, and these are suppositories. By definition, they are solid preparation, each containing one or more medicaments. They are usually administered for single dose as local action or systemic absorption for medicaments. The same volume and consistency of suppository are such that the preparation is suitable for lector administration. Suppository 
usually weigh between one to four grams. The medicament is dispensed in a suitable base, which may melt at suitable temperature. Suppositories may be kept in a well-closed place. They can be stored at a temperature not exceeding more than 30 degrees Celsius, usually refrigerated or anal perennial varieties of sores and excoriation are best treated by application of ointment and suppositories. These conditions occur in patients suffering from hemorrhoids, fistula, and proctitis. Another one good example of uh, suppositories is anosol or bismuth acylgarate. Presentation comes in suppository and also can come in cream. Indication, symptomatic relief of hemorrhoids. So those you can insert one suppository at night and in the morning and after defecation. Clearing anal region with a warmer water and a soap. Apply cream twice a day. Proctosidil contains a uh, that is chinchocaine hydrocortisone. Presentation comes as a suppository. Indication given in hemorrhoids. Dose you have to insert one at night and one in the morning and repeat after a bowel movement. There is also a xyrocaine jerry. This one is used as a local anesthetic and for soothing. The eighth group of uh, drugs uh, that are used within the GIT is uh, enemas. Aqueous or oily solution or suspension for lector administration. They are given for their anti-hermetic and anti-inflammatory or nutritive, pegative or sedative effect or for X-ray examination of the lower bowels. Detention enemas should be inserted after defecation. They should be administered slowly with a patient lying on one side. The patient should lie prone and retain the enema for at least 30 minutes to allow distribution and absorption of the medicine. Larger volume enemas should be warmed to body temperature before administration. Okay, so now we come to the ninth group of drugs uh, that are used within the GIT and these are anti-helmetics. Anti-helmetics are drugs that are used to treat uh, diseases caused by worms. The first uh, type of drug here is mebendazole or Vemox. Presentation comes in 500 milligrams or 100 milligrams starts and suspension of 100 milligrams per 5 min. Indication where it is given is a wind infestation. There are some uh, contraindications like in children less than uh, two years of age and uh, pregnant women or breastfeeding mothers. Then side effects, daily, uh, daily abdominal pains, diarrhea, and hypersensitivity reaction. Parental palm weight or combantrin. It comes in presentation of 125 milligram tabs, 250 mg, 5 mil in suspension. Indication is hookworm, round worms, and trade worms. Action is a paralysis of worms. It paralyzes worms and dislodges them from the GIT. So doses can be 5 to 10 mg per kg board weight, and for hookworms, you can repeat on three connective days. Side effects include GIT, upset, uh, headache, uh, dizziness, and contraindication not to be given with uh, piperazine and in pregnancy. Piperazine or hypsin. Presentation comes in Alexa, 750 milligrams per 5 mil. Indication, thread whim, round whim, infestation. Those are in thread whim, in adults, you can give uh, 15 mil OD for seven days. In children, two to three days, you can give five meals OD for seven days.
Round winds in adults are pretty news as a single dose. It can be given. Side effects include nausea, vomiting, colic, diarrhea, local spasms, coronic contraction in patients with neurologic or renal abnormalities. Then uh, we have the 10th uh, group of drugs that are used within um, the GIT, and these are antiseptics, disinfectants or antiseptics. These are agents that kill microorganisms and prevent their growth on surfaces. They commonly come in form of solutions. Antiseptic, we have things like methylated spirit, drugs used in treatment of acetosomiasis. This is the 11th group of drugs that are used within the GI team. We have Prosequantil or Beautycite. It is effective against all human cytosomes, that is, hematobium, Japoncam, or Stosoma masoni. Presentation tablets containing 600 milligrams. Dosa in Stosoma hematobium. So Masoni, in adults, you can give 40 milligrams per kg body weight. Uh, start or in two divided doses a day. For Stosoma Japan, you can give us 60 milligrams per kg body weight. Start or in two divided or in one, that is in one day. Side effects include Marisa, GIT, GIT or gastrointestinal abscess, cardiac irregularities, Headache, psychosis, and dark urine, and dizziness can be observed as some of the side effects. Remember that this drug is contraindicated in epilepsy, mental disturbance, uh, because of the side effects of psychosis, and also contraindicated in severe heart disease of patients with uh, asthmatic or people who are driving. Metriphone or Viral presentation comes in 100 milligrams. Indication effective only against acetosomia hematobium infection. Those are three doses of 7.5 milligrams per kg board with at intervals of two to four weeks orally. Side effects are quite rare. There you have it. We have been looking at the drugs that are used within GIT. We have discussed about 11 classes of drugs that are used within the GIT. Please, I urge that if you have uh, any questions or comments and some of the lessons that you would want uh, to see as a uh, uh, record, uh, you can always uh, comment uh, below this video. Then I will record those lessons. Look out for other PowerPoint and uh, presentations in pharmacology that we have done, and we have also done other presentation in pharmacology using uh, uh, Word, Microsoft Word notes. So thank you very much, uh, please, and uh, keep us studying.